pulled that empty here, sorry. So um, yeah, old injuries, car accidents, sport injuries, um, self-inflicted injury, um, even, even injuries like sometimes, uh, like, you know, like when some of us were kids and like everyone we knew was getting their tonsils out. And like now some people are like, I had this sore throat. Guess what? The nerves are repairing that cutting out of like a body part. And um, it could be like a hysterectomy. It could be, um, you know, like minor surgery, like you needed a suture somehow. Um, all kinds of um, reasons why the secondary healing is necessary, but it, it can be painful and like a reliving it first. And then it begins to kind of auto-correct with the light body. So like, just so you guys know what Bev is saying, Bev has also participated in these things and he has done work on her, like, like she's participated to work on her light body. And so I, in a way, I'm very grateful to hear it because these are what I mean when I say like, there are results that happen it can be a lengthier part of time. Now, I had one that was very spontaneous. And this is why I say there's no telling when your soul like wants to get you ready to heal or get rid of something, but participate in it. Because what happened was I had on this thigh, I'd been in a car accident where I'm sitting and I hit a tree, like I fishtailed, hit the tree, the door went into the tree and the armrest from the door clipped me right here. I didn't break the leg, but for probably 20 years or more, I had like a dent in my leg. I mean, it was, it was noticeable. Like my ex-husband used to be like, oh, I'll put a little bit of Bondo in there and smooth it out, you know, and stuff like that. Like, you know, we tease. Here was the odd thing about it. Didn't affect my mobility. I could stretch, I could run, I could jump, I could play, I could swim. But if someone went to press on it, I was like, <gasps> it felt like they were going to snap my femur in two. And I was like, <gasps> you know, one day it goes to start healing and I'm feeling this excruciating pain. And you know what happened? I don't know where my body got the actual meat from. The muscle filled in in a matter of about two hours and the dent is gone. And I knew it was it, to me, um, I mean, there's kind of a message in there, but it was definitely a spontaneous healing, but I had wished for it. I was like, I wish, you know, I could do something about this dent on my leg. And um, what I knew in that moment was that I had achieved that 10th dimensional level for healing, for being able to do myself and help people with these secondary healings that it actually happened to me. Now I've been trying to do similar things like with my retina, cause I had laser surgery on it, um, help other people be guided with the building blocks, which are some of the supplements and elements I recommend to people, you know, that support bone tissue, nerve tissue, um, because now your light body is going to be like, here's some calcium. We're going to like, you know, send that on over to those bones and here's some zinc. Let's go make some more myelin sheathing. That's how it happens. You just got to eat the stuff or drink the stuff. <laughs> okay. Like you're drinking the um, juices. Now, um, Helene, you had a recommendation for Bev. You can go ahead and open your mic if you want. Uh, well, um, Bev, I, you know, I, I don't know if you know, I'm a doctor of chiropractic and if yeah, you do. were coming to me as a patient, this is, I would think that it was like your upper ribs are out and your whole shoulder girdle. So that's what I would, you know, I would be adjusting. I just wanted to mention that. <laughs> oh, I felt, yeah, I know. I should have seen somebody about it. Um, but you know, just yeah, if it, you know, you might get immediate relief with the adjustment or it might trigger, like you're saying, you know, it gets worse before it gets better. You know, well, it, it really depends on your body. Well, the car accident also severed a, a disc. It sliced it off. 
mm. and um, the upper thoracic area. Yeah. And uh, so I, I get chest pain from that as well. I also yeah. get costochondritis. So it's kind of hard to differentiate. Okay, am I having a heart attack today or is this something different? So, yeah. 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 But so that, like, that's what, you know, that's what my opinion was, you know. Yeah. I, like I, you know, I'm not there to examine you or anything, but this, this would be my thinking, you know, just want to let you know. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Sometimes what I've had to learn, um, because I am, I'm a person that tends to be a little bit athletic and, and like when I have these problems with my body I get I do get angry I get pissed I get a little afraid like is it ever going to be better um I think a lot of people have that um I want to be better I want to feel like I'm 25 or 30 years old doesn't happen every day but um I've had to force myself to slow slow down pace it remember that the human body has its ways <laughs> and will build up because it's being driven by the higher light body. Um, put in the building blocks, the proper nutrition, the right, I mean, more protein. If you're healing, protein is necessary. And also the, um, even when we're healing our mind, you'd be surprised how like the right food can help us feel grounded. But when it comes to um, injuries, immobilizing that part as best as possible is also important so like for me that meant a sling or like my other knee there was a brace my dent i i just i limped around for a couple of weeks and then it seemed to like you know um get better little realizing i'd have this secondary healing like years later um, a lot of us as children, we didn't go to the doctors or check things because, you know, sometimes when you're a kid, you don't perceive the pain or discomfort the same way. And sometimes you get afraid of mom and dad, like, oh, you know, like my son's like that. He's like, oh, I thought if I told you, I, you'd get mad about going to the hospital and having a hospital bill. And I'm like, you still got to tell me, you know, you still got to tell me you know, do I want another bill? No. Do I want you to do something stupid? No. Do I know you're a boy and things are going to happen? Yeah. Okay. We'll deal with it, but you can't not tell me, but a lot of us did not have maybe the opportunity to speak up or say something or, Hey, I'm hurt or, Hey, so-and-so pulled my arm and it's not right. Or, Hey, I fell off my bike, you know? Um, there's that too, like our past, our childhood. Um, you have to um, know that your soul wants you as intact as possible, and it is a gradual thing. Um, I have had uh, actually someone who couldn't be here, uh, someone who is a relative is actually growing bone tissue. And I was like, oh, yay, like, like, woohoo, it's happening. Keeping parts of you immobilized though, like a sling, you know, like maybe if you, and sometimes you can feel it where you're like, it feels like I need to put my arm like this. I had that with my right arm. I had like the rotator cuff thing. And when I was seeing it, I was seeing, my God, I've been chopping wood and fighting with swords and knives for like lifetimes. And no wonder my arm is just conked out. Now it's just like, and I could not, I kid you not, I could not lift a pen to a shelf because I couldn't make that movement. My rotator cuff was literally out of commission. It didn't matter if I said like, oh, it's a sport injury. That happens to baseball players. Your soul doesn't give a shit what it's from. Your soul's going to heal it. Okay. And I had to literally immobilize my arm use my lefty, be a lefty. And I'm not a good lefty because I'm very, very right bodied. And I was like, oh, and asking for help. I would be like, could you please put that up there? I can't do it. And people would, but you're just kind of like, I don't want to have to ask for help. I feel like an invalid. I feel like an idiot, idiot. 
There's no reason you even have this. What are you going to tell people you've been sword fighting? You know, that's the truth. Because yeah, it catches up and your body's and your soul is going to fix it. Body and soul, body and soul. So don't be deterred by your aches, pains, pokes. Um, I want to help you. Hopefully that will help you get parts of your body open so that you can um, begin feeling like healing energy coming in. And, and healing energy can feel like relief too. Like it can feel like parts of your body begin to relax and ease in. That's a feel of it. It doesn't always feel like, you know, like those thunderbolts, like when you see people lay hands in your leg, be healed. It, it's not really happening like that. And even that, that's a fourth dimensional thing. That's why I'm calling this second level, like next level healing, because some of those things can't get fixed from just a faith healer. And honestly, those faith healers, they're carrying around a lot of people's stuff. It's always the best thing if you can enlist the help of your own higher self and soul, okay? Because it, it'll be so much more personal and intricate and like in. Okay, um, Maura, do you have a question or comment? Oh, sorry, you're muted. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, basically, um, you know, I had a pool accident when I was like eight years old. So I hit the bottom of my head, like I hit my head, the bottom of the pool and fractured, oh, wow. my, and fractured my second vertebrae. So well, that will help. <laughs> that will help. Dr. Valenti, what is your assessment? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's almost close to what they call the hangman fracture, but uh, yeah, what what Patty's saying, every everything can heal. So I think I think this exercise that she just showed us will be really good for you. Okay, right. Okay, what I thought. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Another thing I'm gonna say is um, this area here for a lot of people, like these are connections, okay, on the back of your neck, these are like vital, rig you up, wire you up kind of connections to 5D. But uh. a lot of people have that kind of stuff, like they've, you know, you're, I know boys, they're horsing around with their brother, and they're like, pretend choking or throttling or falls. Um, getting yeah. caught on something like you hear about those people accidentally like the the curtain cord like the reason you have the safety things for babies the baby caught itself in the cord and it's like birth traumas there are people with birth trauma memories right here oh. of how were they pulled out of their mama you know and and like we don't think about that kind of stuff um, we just like, we start dealing with it as we age in the form of pain, but, um, there is something I can do with you in a private session that I've done with some other people that they have a lot of, um, just pain here, pain or pain, discomfort, pressure, um, like things that just aren't like loosening up properly. Okay. And, through the engagement of the light body, it can um, start getting it on its way. All right. And um, yeah, fract I, I'm like, that's one of, I would say one of my big fears is a spinal or spinal cord injury or paralysis. I don't know what I'd do if I were trapped in my own body. I honestly would want to check out, I think. So it's a fear for me. Um, not that I really believe in having to do that that way, but you know, I feel for people that it, it happens and, and anyways, I don't want to get morbid about it. Um, you know, it's, I think a gradual thing that's coming where we will be able to help, um, mobilize people again, to help regrow disc tissue, for example. Um, I recently oh, had hey. someone where she was feeling her, what's it called in the spine, the synovial fluid, spinal fluid. She was feeling and hearing almost like a drip. She described it as like a drip in a cavern. 
She's like, there was something going on with my spinal fluid and I could feel it and hear it. Now, what it actually does is in some ways when it happened to me, it reminded me of changing out the oil in the car. Okay, like you've run this fluid in your body for who knows, 10 years or we'll just use a number. Okay, but time to change out that fluid and freshen up all the fluid so that it's fresh, it's new. There's no memories in there. There's no discarded cellular tissue um, because every part of us can have some biofilm garbage debris yeah. that the body is, we, we don't, the other thing is not letting the waste product of your body accumulate. So um, yeah, it, keeping parts of yourself um, cleansed, toned, and I don't just mean like toned like this, like, oh, you know, um, we're doing physical exercise, the teeny tiny tissues that need a little bit of attention sometimes, because <laughs> that's what your light body is anchored into. It's, um, it's not, it's not as simple as it's just the heart. Um, it's, it's a little more complex than that, but it's also natural, you know, where it, it has to synchronize with other parts. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Maura. Okay. So who's feeling a little bit better after that, um, movement we did? Or if you were able to follow along, if not, I'll be getting out the recordings a little later today. Um, you're to retain them, okay, so that you can practice for two weeks. People have been asking me that because it's not, it's not a just for today thing. Please practice it, okay? Um, so uh, any, uh, I think I'll stop this recording so it's not too